What up, beautiful people? It's your boy Mundus. Welcome to the Shining Light, a place where you're going to learn God's word that's going to improve and transform your life. I'm back again with another beautiful daily devotional from uh, Rap Studio Realities. And today we're going to be reve reviewing one of the articles of, in the devotional. Today's title is this, The Expression of His Vital Life in You. And our theme scripture is from Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 27. I'll read on and then we can analyze the scriptures together. He says, To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, let's read on the first paragraph and then we can explain it a little bit better. He says, Even though listed as many as, as even even though listed by many as one of the different religions of the world, Christianity isn't a religion. Religion describes man insatiable desire to reach out to a God he believes exists somewhere and his fear of that God, whoever that God might be. Then his actions portray his thoughts about this God whom he's trying to search out and understand, trying to live his life according to his thinking and perception about this divine being. <laughs> Christianity, however, is completely different. So, basically, the devotional, uh, Pastor is saying... It's just defining man's what what a religion is. It's like a religion is guess is basically man's path, um attempt to reach out to God. It's man's guesswork trying to figure out if there is a God, there's a way to please him. And he devises these methods and means to please him. This how uh, this God would accept us would expect and accept us, you know. So he 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 says he he has his thoughts and perception who the, about this divine being, and then he 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 devises methods and ways to please his God. Oh, you cannot eat this thing. Oh, you need to dress in a certain way. You can we can only worship him in specific days. We can only you know what I'm saying. It's it's like his own f perception of who God is and how we should please him based on his thoughts and ideas. And he come up with books and ideologies and doctrines and people follow. And then that's how religion gets blown up. But Christianity is beyond that. It might look like a religion, you know, there might be rules and norms and regulations, but it's beyond a religion. Let's let's keep on reading the second paragraph. It's going to be a perfect definition. In Christianity, man isn't in search of God. Rather, one is brought into a living relationship, union, and oneness with God. Christianity is Christ in you, living and walking out his righteousness through you. God has given us a triumphant life in Christ Jesus. Christianity is living out that transcendent life of Christ, the unveiling of the living word in a human life. Man, oh man, that is big. You know that revelation when you when you read on the um, the theme scripture says to whom God ooh, zoom out zoom out hold on a second sorry about that. It says to whom God will make known what is the riches. Of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. So this was a mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I mean, when when back in the Old Testament, God spoke to the Jews through prophets. He appeared to them through with through angels. You know, spoke to them through angels, prophets, and then God was far away from them. They seek God. Moses spoke to God. Moses went to the mountain to meet God, and God gave him the commandments, and he waited and, he, and, and received instructions from Moses. And then Jesus came, the word of God made flesh. God was sent to them. And he spoke, they didn't recognize this. In fact, one of Jesus' names was Emmanuel, which means God with us. And then he walked with them. He talked to them. He ministered to them. And that was not even enough. So God wanted, though Christ came and walked amongst them, that was not it. God wanted something better than that. He didn't want to walk amongst us. I mean, when Jesus was in one place, he couldn't be in another place. He, he, he was he was limited based on a because he was he put on an earthly body. So if he was in a Jerusalem, he couldn't be in Samaria because he was just one man. But he was God with him. But God wanted far beyond that. That's why he says, To whom God will make known the riches of glory. This, this was a mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. He wanted to live in you. So that he can be with you, anybody, anywhere. Christ in us. God in us. The hope of glory. 
we don't have to go seek out in heaven and and try to reach out to heaven to to, to for God to answer us. No, God lives in us now. He walks in us. Everywhere we go, we go with him. This is beyond religion. This is not seeking out any God. No, God is in us now. Christ in us. That is the hope. That is the hope of glory. Christ in us. And then, and the rhapsody says, until this become, uh, hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. It says, until this becomes a revelation to you, something you know for yourself in a practical way, what you what you have will be really will be really blah. Let me say that right. What would you what what you will have will be re, religiosity of Christian principles and not Christianity in them. To be a Christian means you have the very nature of God in your human spirit. It means you become the unveiling of God's righteousness, the expression and the intelligence of His glory. Hallelujah! You know what? That's big. To have the nature of God in your spirit. You know, we have the plant nature, the human nature, but now we have God's nature. When Christ became came in us, he said, Christ in you, the hope of glory, he didn't live in a separate section in our spirit. Like, oh, Christ in us is in a separate side of our spirit, and then we got our human spirit. No, Christ in us means he became one with our spirit. Said that if someone was to look in our spirit, he couldn't tell apart where is God and where is your human spirit beginning. No, we got his nature. The minute he came in our spirit, we became like him. He he was so merged in us, we became one. You can't separate us no more. Like I always try to use, I always use this analogy. If you take two, gla um, two glasses of water, separate glasses, let's assume one glass will be the spirit of God, Christ, God. And then that other, the other glass full of water is your spirit. But when you merge, when you pour, when you pour the glass, let's assume, to represent Christ and you pour that glass into in the other glass which represents your spirit do you know you cannot tell the difference if the waters mix how are you gonna tell okay this way water a begins and this way water B uh, B stops no there's a merge there's a fusion there's a oneness and it becomes one water and then he says Who, whoever is joined to the Lord is one spirit so we became joined to the Lord. And we became one spirit with his nature. His very nature is ours now. We are not human. No. Oh, this is big. <laughs> you know, some scriptures need meditation. Like you said here um, in the Rhapsody, it says, Until this becomes a revelation to you, something you know for yourself in a practical way, well, you, have, you will have religion. This has to be a, re this is a reality. This is not myth. Christ in us, God in our spirit, we are one. We, be, we, we became one with God. We became one with Christ. We have his nature. We have his spirit. He is one with us, the God nature. He says, if any man be in Christ is a new creature, we're no longer human anymore. This is the nature of God. Christianity is beyond humanity now because we received the nature of God. Oh boy, this is big. And he says, the Christian is literally born of God. He's the God man. That is the mankind of God. Oh man, this is big. <laughs> Did you see that? Oh my God, this is huge. This is huge. Yo, this is beyond religion. Let's read that again. It says, the Christian is literally born of God. He's the God man. That is the mankind of God. He has and lives the God life in the earth. In actual sense, He's a God. Oh boy. Pause. Before you click off before you click off the video and say, Oh man, I can't listen to this blasphemy. This is facts. This is truth. I should I should not say facts, because facts can be changed. This is reality. And that's why it's called rhapsody of realities. We are studying God's realities. These are realities. Until we know who we are, we could be struggling. You know, the word of God tells us who we are. Unveils to us who God has made us. And the fact of the matter is, made us gods. We are the God kind. We are the God kind. We because we received His nature, and then we were translated from mankind to God kind. Because He says, uh, from the domain of darkness to the kingdom of His dear Son. Because we received the nature of God, we were born of God. When you human beings give back to human beings, if a, if a dog gave back to a, to to a cat, that would be a mystery. You'd be like, what that? What what happened? What is wrong with this? 
So if God gives birth, why are we surprised he gives birth to God? The God-man, the mankind of God. Because we are in this earth and we got the human body. So we are the man version of God. Just like Jesus was God in human flesh, we are God in human... Oh boy, this is big. I don't even... Before... Yeah, let's just keep on reading. Relax. Don't leave yet. Just calm down a second. Let's read on. Um, he says, he has and lives the God life in the earth. In actual sense, he's a God. In Psalm chapter 82, verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. So children of the Most High are gods. He's trying to tell us anything that's born of God is a God. God gives birth to gods. He does not give birth to humans. He gives birth to gods. Because he has brought us to his level, to his class. The class of gods. You know, you have the humankind, the plant life, the animal life. No, when you are a Christian now, you are a new creature. You're no longer in the mankind. You become, you're translated to the God kind. You are the God man in this earth. Just like Jesus was the word of God made flesh. We are that word that's now flesh too. We are just like Jesus. I'm going to show you that. Oh, how do you say we like this Jesus? That is blasphemy. I'm going to show you that real, real quick. So chill out. Chill out a second. Let me show you that real quick. Uh, as he is. As he is. <laughs> you know, when you're, you don't know the exact scripture. You just search. Thank God for the U Bible. You can just search for... um. Uh, I think it's in First John. Aziz, hold on, hold on. Aziz, so uh, we search for that. Yes, that's it. First John chapter four verse seventeen. Now highlighted it too, so I have it highlighted. He said here, First John chapter four verse seventeen. It says herein is our love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Context, when you read the Bible, he's talking about God and he's talking about Jesus. He says, whoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. Oh my God. This is what we were talking about, right? Man, man. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, okay, all right, right. Let's read that again. Um, from verse 15, it says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, that's how you get born again, but confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him. If you confess that you're born again, God dwells in you, and he in God. That's what we're talking about. You become one with God. You can't separate us no more. And we have known and believed that the love of God has to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. He is a love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Meaning as God is. We are just like him. We have made us gods. Because we are born of him. Um, let's just wrap this up. Let's just see what he was saying. He said, we are children of the Most High because... We were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This is the reason sickness, disease, and infirmity of the body cannot and shouldn't be in your master. Have this mentality. Can God be sick? Can God be down? Can God be afflicted with colds and disease? If not, if God lives in you, if God cannot be sick, why should I be sick? Because number one, he's been joined to me. That means everything that affects me should affect him because we are one now. And God cannot be sick. We have his nature. We have his life. Man, 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 man. He says, you are partaker of the divine nature. That nature cannot be corrupted, defiled by sickness, disease, or anything out of darkness. Because it's the very nature of God. This is exactly what I'm talking about. That very nature of God. God cannot be defiled by darkness, sickness, depravity, failure. We have his nature that has made us above sickness, disease, failure. It's a consciousness now. That's who he has made us. As he is, so are we. So if God, if you are like God, God does not get sick. God cannot walk in failure. Why should we be sick and walk in failure? Because we have his nature now. Before we could, when we had the human nature. That human nature of mankind could be subject to sickness, disease, and failure. 
That's why he translated us from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. When we were born again, we became one with him and we received his nature that is superior to failure. He said, this is Christianity. It is the working of divinity, the Christ life in you. The practice of the heavenly and the earth. <laughs> it is a practice. It's a consciousness. It's a meditation. Don't look at yourself as a weakling. Look at yourself as divine life is in me. The nature of God. God in me. Christ in me. The hope of glory. He said, this is the mystery that's been hidden. They didn't understand it. Back in the day when God talked to them from the mountains and he sent all these prophets to talk to them. And then Jesus came. And then they didn't even know. That's why Jesus told his disciples, wait, relax. We're here. I'm going to the Father and I'll send you a comforter. That he, might be, he will not only be with you, he will be in you. That was the mystery. God living in a human body. He can be with all of us. We became one with God now. The mystery that was hidden from the foundation of the world. Christ in you. The hope of glory. God in you. The hope of victory and success. This, it makes sense now. Christ in you. That's the mystery. Now, Emmanuel, it, of course, is it's not only in you. He's with you. So it's beyond, it's, it's an additional revelation. You know, the, the different names of God. Um, you had Jehovah, uh, and then you had all these different names. Uh, Jehovah, Rapha, Jehovah, I can't even remember most of his names. And then you had Emmanuel, God with us. All the It says all the revelation of God's name have been fulfilled in Christ. Now Christ is in us. God is in us. He's in us and with us. <laughs> Glory. So let's take this confession together. Just repeat this after me. I'm God's dwelling place. In Him I live and move and have my being. I'm a conveyor of eternal verities and a partaker of the divine nature. I have the ability to affect positive changes in my world because the greater one lives in me. Glory to God. And you can read further studies in 1 John 4 4, 1 John 5 11 and 13. And then if you're following the Bible plan, you can pick a one-year reading plan or two-year plan, whichever suits you. I hope you've been blessed by today's devotion. Make sure you leave me a comment, questions you have in the comment section. I'll try to respond as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're not. I release a video every single day. And um, make sure you like this video. That's important. If you're not born again, <clears throat> I want to give you a chance to receive Christ in you. You know, you can't, you, you, Christ cannot live in you until we read that. Uh, you need to confess Jesus as the Lord of your life. That's how God lives in you. You become born again. Because Christ died for you and God raised him from the dead. And you, you need to believe that and confess that. So I'm going to lead you into a prayer of salvation. Just repeat this after me. Oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ. Son of the living God. I believe he died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. Congratulations. It's as simple as that. If you said this prayer, make sure you leave me a comment so I can know you did and I can respond to you as soon as I can. Subscribe to this channel so you can learn more of God's word. Every day I release a video that builds your faith strong. And then you can watch your life grow from one level to the another. And till tomorrow, it's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous in all you do. God bless you.